edible after the meeting. Please note, all guests will have their microphones muted when they join the meeting. You'll be asked to remain on mute unless I ask you to speak, for example, in the three minute slot reserved for objectors, the applicants, supporters, and ward councillors. Now, please do not switch your microphone on until I've given you permission to speak. Attendees who are using the telephone dialing function on a smartphone are also muted. If I ask you to speak, please dial star six to unmute yourself. To ensure that this virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual will be allowed to speak at any time. Any person speaking must be permitted to finish what they are saying without interruption. If I request an individual stop speaking, they should do so immediately. Interruption may result in you being disconnected from this meeting. If a member of the committee wishes to speak, could I ask them to indicate this via the raise and symbol on the message board? Members of the public are reminded that the message board is not for public use. Any message left on the message board by members of the public will be disregarded by committee members. Bearing in mind this meeting is live streamed and that a recording will be available on the Council's YouTube channel, if you are planning to speak, you may choose to switch off your camera so that only your voice is heard. Members of the public who are disconnected from the meeting due to technical difficulties should use the link, in, you should use the link or dining instruction they were sent initially to return to the meeting. Members of the public are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of this meeting. A copy of the Council protocol for reporting and filming is available on the Southern Council's website. During the meeting, members of the committee will not access the internet except as it relates to the official business of the meeting, send or receive emails, text messages or tweet concerning the business of the committee to anyone outside the meeting. Please note that members may be accessing the, may be accessing the agendas via the internet. Um, and of course, as you know, we'll be taking a five minute screen break every hour and reconvening thereafter. I would like now to ask officers to introduce themselves to explain their role at this meeting. And I'll begin with the planning officers. If I can begin with Colin Wilson. Please introduce yourself, Colin. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor Seaton. Hello, uh, I'm Colin Wilson. I'm the Head of Regeneration for Old Kent Road, and I'm also the presiding planning officer for this meeting. Thank you. Uh, uh, Troy Davis. Uh, evening, everyone. I'm Troy Davies, team leader at Old Kent Road and the case officer for this scheme. Thank you. Uh, Pip Hawson. Hi, I'm Pip Hawson. I'm the team lead for transport policy, uh, concentrating on the Old Kent Road strategy area. Thank you very much. I, I, I assume there are no other planning officers. I'll move on to the legal officers. Can I ask for uh, John Goss to introduce himself? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is John Gorst. Uh, I'm a solicitor with uh, Southwark Council, and I'll be advising members in relation to legal and governance matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I ask the clerk to introduce himself, Tim Murdoch? Uh, good evening, Chair. I'm uh, Tim Murdoch. I'm the Constitutional Officer and clerk for this uh, meeting. Um, I'm here to minute the meeting and advise on the procedures for hearing the items and on decision making. Very good. And um, is there another a colleague with you, or should I? That's it. Is it? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gregory Weaver. I am shadowing the committee, and I will be, I will become the constitutional officer and clerk for this meeting going forward. Very good. Thank you, and welcome to you. Welcome to you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, I'll now begin the meeting formally. Um, item one on the on the agenda, of course, apologies. I, I don't believe there are apologies. We now have a full house confirmed. Agreed, thank you. I'll now move on. Uh, I'll now move on to item two, confirmation of voting members. I'll now ask members of the committee to confirm that they are a voting member of this committee. And I'll begin with the Vice Chair, Councillor Dan Morell. Can you confirm you are a voting member of this committee? Yes, Chair, I'll confirm I'm a voting member. Thank you, Councillor Richard Livingstone. Can you confirm you're a voting member? Thank you, Chair, I can confirm I'm a voting member. Very good, Councillor Damon O'Brien, can you confirm? Uh, voting member, Chair. Very good. Councillor uh, Cleo Stones, can you confirm? Good evening, Chair. Yes, I'm a voting member. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dan Whitehead, can you confirm? Yes, I'm a voting member, Chair. Very good. Councillor Kath Whittam, can you confirm, please? 
Yes, I'm a voting member. Very good, Councillor uh, Bill Williams, can you confirm? Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Thank you, and I'm Councillor Martin Seaton, and I'm also a voting member of this committee. I'll now move on to item three, which is notification of any item to business which the Chair deems urgent. And members, can you now just confirm you are in receipt of the supplemental agenda one, um, which contains the members pack and of course the agenda report relating to item 6.1. You can confirm you received. Yes, yes Chair. Confirm. Very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. In that case, now move on to item four, disclosure of interest and dispensation. Does any member wish to declare any interest or dispensation in respect of any item or issue to be considered at this meeting? No, Chair. Very good. Thank you very much. I'll now move on to item five, which is the minutes. And members, of course, this is page six to ten of the main agenda pack. Um, can we approve these minutes as the correct record for the meeting held on the 17th of March 2021? Approved. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now I move on to item six, um, which is development management. Now the next item of business concerns the determination of planning applications. I'd like to remind everyone of the committee's guidance and conduct of business. Officers will present the report, outline their recommendations and answer questions raised by the committee. If present wishing to speak, the following may then address the committee for no more than three minutes each. A spokesperson representing any objector to the application, and by now you'd need to identify the single spokesperson, or if more than one objector wishes to speak, that time will be divided accordingly within the three minute time slot. They will be followed by the applicant or their agents. Indeed, followed by, they will be followed by the spokesperson representing any supporter who lives within 100 metres of the development site. And of course, last but not least, a ward councillor representing the area affected by the proposals. And, and we've still been advised that each speaker should restrict their comments to the planning aspects of the proposals and should avoid repeating information which is already in the report. Now, the meeting is not a hearing where all participants present evidence to be cross-examined by other participants. At the end of each representation, the committee may ask questions of the presenter. Speakers should lead the committee on two subjects on which they would welcome further questioning by committee. Ward members in attendance and those nominated to speak on behalf of objectors supporting applicants may be asked to make further brief contributions in case any issues need to be clarified after they've addressed this meeting. Now, it would not be an opportunity, of course, to take part in the debate of the committee. After receiving all submissions, the committee will debate the application and consider the, the recommendations. Now, this is a council committee meeting, which is open to the public, but of course, there should be no interruptions from members of the public. Finally, I'd like everyone present to know that although the planning committee comprises members of different political parties, uh, we are not politically whipped. Our decisions are made in accordance with the council's planning policies and based upon the information contained within the relevant report, together with the consultation responses and any verbal submissions made today. How we approach these applications set out in the development management report at item 6, and if members are happy to note that report, we will move to considering the planning application. Are you content, members? Content. Thank you very much indeed. In that case, I'll move on to item 6.1. And this is, of course, address as 671 to 679 Oakland Road. And that's, of course, London SE5, SE15 1JS. JS and the court members, these are pages 20 to 143 of the agenda pack and pages 1 to 2 of the agenda, agenda report. Can I ask the, uh, uh, the presenting officer to begin your presentation, but please introduce yourself first. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Troy Davies, team leader for Old Kent Road and the case officer for this scheme. I'll start by sharing my screen now. Very good, thank you. Uh, can everyone see my screen here? I think we certainly can, yep. You may just, just want to full screen. Try to get it, move this to the side a bit. At the bottom, your bottom right hand corner. But there you are, keep going to your right. This one, no, to the left, that's the next one. Next <laughs> one, there we go. There you go. Well, not quite, anyway. There we go. You got it. Okay. 
Uh, tonight item is the uh, demolition of the existing KFC site and uh, the redevelopment to comprise of a student housing scheme above a commercial ground floor unit with a 373 square metre pocket park to the rear of the site. The site is an island site um, located on the east, uh, northern side of Old Kent Road and is flanked by Ruby Street to the east and the north and Hyman Street to the west. It comprises a single storey KFC with a drive through function and has 15 car parking spaces on site. Three, three category B trees on site, which, are, which have all been TPO'd. The site is within the Old Kent Road Opportunity Area and is within sub area three and is identified as site allocation OKR 13. This, uh, this slide demonstrates the um, existing functions on site now. The top left here, we have a view from Old Kent Road looking back along Ruby Street at the site. Top right is from the junction of Ruby Street and Hindman Street to the rear with one of the TPO trees visible. Bottom left-hand corner is the junction of uh, Old Kent Road and Hindman Street. And to the bottom right here is looking from the adjacent um, carpet right site uh, at, the, at the car parking area that is on site currently. As mentioned previously, the site is located within uh, sub area three and OKR 13 here located in the red, red line. On the, on the left side here shows the uh, parks and open space plan for the OKR 13 with the site again identified by the red line. Uh, as you can see at the rear is the space for the pocket park. On the right side here is a typologies map for uh, OKR 13, which we have here at the front, which shows the high street character of which the commercial unit is proposed. Onto the scheme, the scheme is a part 10 story fronting Old Kent Road, part 12 story to the rear along Ruby Street. Uh, it comprises of a ground floor commercial unit and 267 bed spaces uh, above the commercial ground floor unit. And at the rear of the site here on the right is where the 373 square meter pocket park will, is proposed. This slide, this slide shows the uh, breakdown of the student accommodation within, within the scheme. There is 267 bed spaces of which 93 are affordable. There is, and this equates to 35% affordable based on habitable rooms. Uh, there is a 2,000, two, two million pound offsite contribution to affordable housing, which is, which goes further than the recommended 1.5 million uh, recommended within the viability report under, undertaken by uh, Stretton's independent advisor. Uh, and this equates to approximately eight, eight two bed units and, and 24 habitable rooms. And of the, uh, 267 bed spaces, 27 uh, will be for wheelchair accessible units, and this equates to 10%. Uh, we can see here on this slide, the uh, contribution by uh, per habitable room, a non-affordable habitable room. So we have recently completed LSE scheme and Eagle Wharf. Um, as you can see here in the second column from the right, from the affordable habitable rooms, it equals roughly £10,152 per non-affordable habitable room to make up the £2 million offsite contribution. This, this uh, slide shows a, uh, the tenure distribution within the scheme. So we're at the first floor level, all the way through the second, ninth, and then the tenth and eleventh floors. And here on the right is shown where the uh, accessible studios will be equating to the 27 uh, studio units in there. This slide demonstrates the types of accommodation that would be provided within the scheme. Top right here is your typical ensuite bed, uh, top left, sorry, is your typical ensuite bedroom. Top center is a typical uh, wheelchair accessible bed space. And the top right is a typical studio room. 
The bottom left here is your standard kitchenette that is on each of the floors. And on the right here shows the location of the kitchenettes uh, for students to use. And there is three uh, kitchens per floor for students to use. Uh, the commercial frontage here, um, obviously it, it's a commercial space that, that uh, complies with the high street character as required in the uh, AAP. It's an uplift, uplift of 31 square metres for 257 square metres overall. The existing KFC was 226 square metres. And the development proposes active frontages uh, along all sides of the development, which is currently lacking from the KFC on site. As we can see here, active frontages from Old Kent Road, Ruby Street and Hyman Street. We have the uh, student entrance here from Ruby Street. And at the back here is a, a amenity space that leads out into the pocket park. Uh, members are advised that during uh, pre-app discussions, the, the rear wall of the development was pulled back to align with the rear wall of the carpet right uh, development, which allows for this pocket park to integrate with the um, green space within Ruby Triangle. Uh, building heights, we move on to, uh, in, the, in the original uh, draft AAP, the site was identified as a tier two building of up to 25 storeys. Uh, through the revisions of the AAP, it's now identified as a lower building ranging between three to 11 storeys in height. Here on the left, you can see the, uh, the locate, location of the development within the stations and crossings map. And here on the right shows how it will align with the consented developments around. You have the Hyman and Ruby Street development consented here on the right, the carpet right site consented on the left and Ruby Triangle to the rear. The revised height of uh, 10 storeys fronting Old Ken Road and with a, a slight rise to the rear of 12 storeys is compliant with the, with the new uh, building heights contained within the revised AAP. Uh, design and materiality of the scheme. Uh, this the scheme is uh, the material palette consists of a single light gray brick accompanied by an accent glazed blue brick used on the facades fronting the old Kent Road and the pocket park. The window frames are given a contrasting bronze color to complement the gray, uh, background gray palette. Uh, here we can see uh, the amenity provision within the site. Uh, on the left here is the ground floor communal amenity area, which opens up onto the publicly accessible pocket park. And on the first floor level, there is a internal lounge, which opens up onto an 80 square meter um, external terrace fronting onto Hyman Road and Old Kent Road elevations. Uh, here we have the uh, pocket park. So the top, top right, uh, top left here shows the pullback line of the development so we can see that there is a seamless transition between the pocket park and walking through the back here to the Ruby Triangle ca carpet right sites and therefore onto the Surrey Canal um, linear parkway and here on the left taken from a different uh, here on the right sorry taken from a different angle you can see coming from um, carpet right across the site and around through here providing that link way through to the uh, Grade two, list, grade two listed uh, heritage gas holders. Uh, the development provides 373 square metres of uh, pocket park space that's publicly accessible. And the offsite contribution is uh, sought and agreed through the section 106 of circa 33,000 pounds that will go towards improvements of the near of the Ruby Street here, which will be stopped up and with no access to uh, Old Kent Road as part of our plans for the site. So that will that, that money will contribute towards uh, various landscaping techniques and everything that will improve Ruby Street once it's been stopped up and pedestrianized. Uh, here shows a view of the site in the wider open space master plan. As mentioned on previous slides, we can see the development aligning with the rear of the carpet right site and that seamless transition walking through 
from the linear park all the way through to, through to the uh, gas holders down uh, to the northeast of the site. Uh, members are notified that there is this uh, pub here at 14 Ruby Street, which we hope will be able to take advantage of this open space and uh, the stopping up of Ruby Street here with it being very pedestrianized and more uh, friendly for socializing as well in the pocket park as, as well. Uh, sustainability and landscape, as we can see here, uh, proposes green, green roofs are proposed through the scheme. All existing five trees on site are to be, are to be retained, including the three TPO trees. Uh, there is significant uh, landscaping proposals on the site, which leads to an increased urban greening factor of 0.48 and also allows for a significant gains in biodiversity. Uh, there, to achieve carbon net zero, there's an offsite um, carbon offset payment secured through the section 106 of circa 141,000 pounds. And the CO2 savings on site consists of 73.8% for the student aspect and 64.9% savings for the commercial aspect. Public realm, as mentioned previously, this is, a, this is an image taken from Ruby Street. This will be stopped up as part of our plans to close off Ruby Street from Old Kent Road. And then the access into the student accommodation is through here. We have some um, improvements to the, to the uh, public realm, which is not evident on the KFC, KFC, at the, KFC site at the moment. And the, at the front here is also some visitor uh, cycle parking spaces. Here we have the uh, transport uh, section where the policy will be, uh, the, the development will be uh, policy compliant with cycle parking proposed here within the basement area as highlighted in the light pink color. And members are notified this is also a car free development. Uh, here's some CGI images of the development. Uh, this on the left here is uh, looking Southwest from the Southwest at the development. So this is Hyman Street here. We got a view from the rear, Hyman Street and Ruby Street there. And this is looking from the Southeast um, and with Ruby Street here at the front. And again, the uh, trees retained on site, existing trees retained on site. Uh, in closing, uh, summary of the scheme, 35% affordable bed spaces, two million pound offsite contribution to affordable housing. There's an uplift in employment opportunities and commercial floor space, environmental biodiversity and sustainability net gains. And the pocket park provided at the rear is in compliance with the uh, aspirations of the site within the OKR AAP. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, members, are, are there any initial questions to try? Uh, Councillor Whittam, then followed by Councillor uh, Livingstone. Yeah, just a small thing. On um, slide number 20, you had you said that was Ruby Street, and yet it's still showing. So Ruby Street is being stopped up. But is the road surface going to be retained then? Uh, no, that's just a, that's just an image of how it is at the moment. Uh, that was just taken as a quick image, uh, but Pip will be able to provide a bit more information on the on the plans for how it will look. When just to before stop. before I turn to Pip, is the student entrance on that side? Yeah, that is uh, pulled back from the uh, Ruby Street line. Uh, I can bring the I'll get the uh, slide back for you. One second, please. Yeah. So the people have to access the accommodation through that door there. So if they're moving in and everything, they can't get very close with all their gear. Um, sorry, I just got to share my screen again. Slide 20. Oh, we can see uh, on here as well, uh, slide 13 may, might show it better. Uh, so you've got Ruby Street here, and then the setback of the uh, building line and the entrance is here, set away from the, from the edge of so Ruby Street. So where are the deliveries happening then? 
Shall I respond to that? Um, okay, thank you. Although we're stopping up Ruby Street, it will still be accessible for uh, deliveries. The idea is the whole area will turn into a one-way movement from Sandgate onto Heinemann. Ruby will remain um, accessible, but not um, not here. This. Um, Sorry, I'm waving my counter around mm. realising that you won't be able to see it. But where <laughs> tr that is the stocking up um, on Ruby Street. Um, and therefore, there will still be loading bays, which we'll be introducing over the next 18 months to two years as we change traffic management and introduce control parking in the area. So there will be loading bays there. Okay. And on top of that, um, I have arranged to bespoke the DSP bond uh, plan that shows um, how they will manage the, the, the student delivery and leaving days so that they have to make special arrangements for that with our highway authority. But Ruby Street will remain tarmac? Um, well, what I'm hoping, Councillor, is that we by the time this is developed we will have got sufficient 278 to widen the footways there and reduce but we do still need for a refuse vehicle to reverse down there uh, so there it will be a nicer environment but it 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 is still in effect carriageway and uh, it's okay. just there won't be any uh, rat running through there okay is Thank that you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Liverstone, followed by Councillor Bryan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I've got two questions. Okay. Uh, first question, and this is one I know that was covered in the, uh, the pre-briefing, but I think it's worth uh, having it uh, discussed in, in the public forum, which is about the level of student housing there is within the Old Kent Road. We've, uh, we've agreed permissions for 272, St James's Road that sorry we haven't agreed ourselves it was planning inspector that did it over our heads but 272 St James's Road that's the great court development that's currently going up uh there's the uh the Alderton Road uh, I think 313 Alderton Road development and there's the LSC development of 43 Glengall Road so it's quite a lot of student accommodation that that's being uh delivered locally so it'd be useful just to uh, for, for any local residents that are in the school to understand the context of that within the overall area and making sure that this student development isn't eating up all the development capacity there is locally uh, and we're not going to get uh, too many students in the area. So that's the first question. Second question was one I haven't picked on previously, but it was it was a thought that arose having seen the, the presentations. Um, the, the buildings look quite blocky and grey uh from, from what you've shown as a sort of quite uh quite sort of rectangular uh and i appreciate you've got the uh the sky blue glaze but from the diagrams you showed the sky blue glaze look quite gray as well so it's really just any comments on that so that we're not just getting something that looks very rectangular and gray uh sitting on the old kent road and, and we have something that, that has a positive uh, uh value to the area all right, okay, let's take the first question. I, I suspect um, Troy or, or Quadim will take that one. Eh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, perhaps I can back, come back on that one because it was discussed at the new Southwark Plan examination in public um, today um, around, around the Old Kent Road. Um, we, we don't have an alloc a specific allocation for student housing on individual sites in the Old Kent Road or elsewhere in Southwark. Um, so any applications have to meet the test of the... Um, the, the overall policy for student housing, um, which is which is the only policy in London that, that, that does require um, an affordable housing provision as well as an affordable student housing provision. Um, at the moment, we have no um, uh, further pre-application um, schemes for student housing in the Old Kent Rose. Um, this this was the last one we have had. Uh, the four schemes. Uh, the, the, sorry, the um, St James Road scheme, Ilderson scheme, this scheme and LSE are spread out within the allocations in the Old Kent Road, so not concentrated in one particular area. Um, and of course, if that changed, we would review that uh, at pre-application stage 
And of course, we'd also brief members about that and, and seek your views. Um, in, in, in terms of current delivery of, of housing um, and affordable housing, um, we have put together a briefing note, a summary note of affordable housing currently being delivered in the Old Kent Road. So that's for schemes which have been consented and are now being built or have been built or are about to start build out. Um, so we will have somewhere in the, the region of a, just over a thousand homes being constructed probably by June of this year, of which uh, currently about half of those are affordable. Um, so, so at the moment, um, the affordable housing delivery is, 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 is very good. Um, and so we don't feel that um, this scheme or the three other schemes have, have compromised that. We, we still have plenty of capacity to, to deliver the phase one uh, target of nine and a half thousand homes, but we will keep that under review. Um, and our new select plan policy allows us to do that. So, so we can, if, if we felt that that was changing, we could push back against that. Thank you, thank you. And um, of course the design, <clears throat> the gray blocks as it were. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, perhaps, perhaps if, I, if I touch on that, um, th th there is, as usual, a, uh, a condition uh, which would include a condition about some um, a material a sample pallet panel being built on site to actually look at what that looks like. Um, it is it is sometimes hard to um, render um, brick textures and um, uh, tile textures on CGI's, um, so that that might be um, one reason why that might look a bit too grey. Um, we certainly have discussed with the um, the architect um, the depth of the facades and the articulation on the facades. Uh, so we do know that that um, you know that there are quite deep reveals on the windows. Uh, and as Troy pointed out, there's the articulation on the bricks as well. Um, but but it's certainly something that um, we could we could be part of a continued conversation with the design team as we as if, if you were to grant permission that we could secure through through the conditions which are already recommended by Troy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Livingstone. I've, I've, I'm going to go to Councillor Bryan, followed by Councillor Whitehead. Councillor Bryan. Thank you, Chair. Um, two questions. The first one was, um, there was an objection about sunlight from a local resident. Are you able to show us where that resident lives in, um, uh, in relation to the site? Is there something that you can just sort of give us a, an idea of? I don't know if we've got a, a plan. I, I know there's one in the main pack. Is a, there's a good one, but I can't tell which is the affected resident. Oh, I didn't, let's see. Troy, do you have a, hmm, is there a rendering available, I wonder? I'm not sure in the members pack if there is anything we can uh, use. But. Uh, no. Sorry, I'll, I'll open the report in the background if you want to ask your second question. Yeah, yeah, no, Brian. that's fine. That's fine. I'm well I think my up. second question is going to be for Colin. Um, I'm just inquiring as to why this building is so much lower than the ones around it. It looks a bit odd, really. I mean, you mentioned that the AAP, it changed category in the AAP, so it had a lower height limit than the buildings around it. What was what was the logic behind that? Okay. Uh, 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 yes. So, so, so the, lo the logic, is, as um, it's described in the... Um, in the AP is, is to have a shoulder height on the, the, the frontage of this part of the Oaken Road, about 10 storeys. And then that is punctuated by taller buildings um, at, at intervals. So what we describe it in the AP as is, is um, a hit and miss pattern. Um, so you have, by which we don't mean hit and miss in terms of quality of design, but by which we mean um, there is a lower bit and a taller bit and a lower bit and a taller bit. Uh, and originally in 2017, um, we had three taller towers here lined up opposite the, um, the church and the listed library. Uh, and we were also trying to keep the trees and create the space behind it where the old Victorian pub is that Troy referenced. Uh, so we, we basically changed, changed the plan. So we felt that actually th this was a better piece of urban design townscape if the building was lower. Um, and so, that, so that's you're, why you're trying to it. mitigate the sense of enclosure, is that right? Yes, and, and, and then if you're in the buildings either side, you, you still get an outlook. Um, whereas if they're all lined up close to each other, you, they, they, you start blocking each other's outlook. Um, so, so that was another reason as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and I thought that was a logic to it, thank you. Uh, Councillor Whitehead. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just looking for um, a little bit more clarification on the position here with respect to affordable homes. So having read the report, I wasn't entirely clear. I understood what the requirement is under planning policy in Southwark for affordable housing in the context of student accommodation. Uh, um, who would respond to that question? Just uh, uh, if if uh, whilst Troy's looking for the um, okay. the 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 the, uh, the the objection piece, if, if I respond to that, the the um, the requirements are um, for uh, thirty five percent affordable student housing on the sites, uh, and that should be for an institution, um, higher education institution based with 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 a uh, based in Southwark, which is the case in this instance, uh, and that's the University of London. And the um, uh, the requirement then is, is in addition to 35% affordable student housing within a scheme, um, that uh, the developer should also seek to provide 35% uh, affordable housing if it's viable to do so. Um, uh, and uh, the, the the, the test there is 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 one of vi both of viability and also the practicality of putting affordable housing on the site. So the um, the three one three Ilderston Road scheme um, comprised two taller buildings on a podium. So so one of those is student housing and one is affordable housing. So it was practical to put that um, affordable housing on the site. This site is is a much smaller site, uh, and we don't think it's practical to um to provide the affordable housing on the site so in that instance uh the um developer is asked to provide an off-site contribution uh and we test that um with against viability with our own independent viability assessor and as troy pointed out the our own assessor felt that 1.5 million pounds was the most that this scheme could viably afford to contribute to off-site affordable housing um, we stress to the, to the development team the importance that the council places on the provision of affordable housing. So, so they have offered to go beyond that to uh, a £2 million uh, offer, which compares um, very well to, it's actually the best offer we, we've had for off-site affordable housing um, uh, recently in, in Southwark. So, so we, think, we feel that's a, a reasonable offer for them, which meets our policy requirement that it's the maximum viable contribution to off-site affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Whitehead, for your Could, your I, could I have a follow-up, Chair? Is that okay? Pardon? Could I make a follow-up question? Ah, oh, okay. It's on affordable housing, is it? Mm hmm Okay. Right. Go ahead. So, I, I guess I just want to clarify, because I, I don't un understand the, the practical difficulties here, of why in the report it mentions how it would require a separate core for affordable housing to be delivered and i understand the, the point you mentioned about there being two separate towers in a different development why would it need a separate core so, so why why does it have to be so distinguished um let's say social right. housing okay we've got that question okay okay got that question um who wish to respond to that uh, troy or colin uh, uh, perhaps if, if, I, if I come back on that one, I mean, ge generally um, for uh, affordable ha uh, housing provision, um, you would you would look to, for a call uh, which was self-contained um, because that then impacts on the service charge uh, for the um, for the affordable housing provider, whether that's a housing association or whether that would be the council. Uh, because you, you're essentially um, allocating uh, service charges to the occupiers of, of, of buildings. Um, and uh, th there are other issues around management. So there's a management issue around housing as opposed to student housing. Uh, so I think it would be very difficult to, to manage a shared um, reception with both students and residents. Um, so, so for those reasons, we, we don't think it would be possible to um, to have... The affordable housing on this site because it, it's actually quite a small plan. Okay. Um, for I, I think that's clear enough, Colin. Not you, I think that's clear enough. Could I ask? I'm not going to. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pursue it any further. It, okay. it, these are whilst, whilst I accept the question in, in terms of the principle. The application 
is the application is the application before us and um you, you're you're questioning the fundamentals of the application that is why it is this way not the other way um it is before us and we're now being asked to consider it um i'm not going to you may answer that question of the applicant but i'm not going to pursue it with the officers at this stage already okay i'm going to move on um, um try sorry, you, sorry, you respond to the earlier question yeah yes yeah, uh, for councillor o'brien's uh, question if i just uh, share my screen again So we, uh, here we just have the um, surrounding occupiers here, uh, close by that are residential because carpet ride on the other side isn't residential. Uh, the objector came from 6, 681 Old Kent Road, just down here, if you can see where my mouse has hovered. Um, they have a little out, outdoor terrace area which is not impacted between the existing and proposed scenarios. There is only a slight 1% reduction, 0.1% reduction to the uh, amenity space of the approved Ruby Murdoch scheme that's been consented. Uh, members are advised, uh, alerted though, that the 681 Old Kent Road um, site has planning permission for a four story dwelling. Is that correct, Colin, or is it a four story block of flats? It, from it, the it, it's it's um, yes it's um, uh, a uh, uh, an ex a rebuild of the um, the building to the rear Troy so um, yeah. so so between the green square and the yellow space it's that yeah it's that building there. So the um, the daylight sunlight conclusions were that there was no uh, discernible impact on the occupiers or, or on any residential occupiers between the existing and proposed scenario. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much for that. And that's the evidence is clear. I, in that case, what I'm going to do, um, unless there are further material planning questions to, to the uh, presenters, I'm now going to move on. Um, does anyone wish to speak in objection to the application? Uh, uh, can I just note, I've got a, a Mr. Lawrence, Nick Lawrence, is that right? Chair, yeah, that's... Um, the speaker for the applicant. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I yeah. forgive me. Yes, I see that there. Yeah. I've not um, been notified no, of any objectors. Thank you very much. In that case, then uh, I will move on to um, the uh, to the uh, uh, applicant. And I, if I can get this right, get this right, um, I believe indeed Nick Lawrence for on behalf of the applicant. Are you present, Nick? Yes, I am, Chair. Yeah. Very good, very good. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the routine. You have three minutes. Um, I, I will, um, are you Are you going to be speaking on behalf or are there other colleagues here who will be speaking with you? Uh, no, just me for my, my, my three minutes um, and then okay. my colleagues can answer any questions members may have. Very good, very good. Can I ask you first of all though, to just to introduce yourself, to confirm your name and the organization that you work for? Yes, my name's uh, Nick Lawrence from Tribe Student Housing, the applicant. Very good, thank you. In that case then, I am going to start the clock now. You may you have your three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to thank your officers for their cooperation in bringing forward this um, committee report that represents the culmination of 12 months work in bringing forward redevelopment plans for this site. With me today are representatives presenters from both my development team, including my architect and planning consultant that can answer any questions you may have. Our proposals will create a slender 10 to 12 storey building that respects the proposed heights for buildings facing onto Old Kent Road and will add to the mix of land uses in this proposed town centre site for the Old Kent Road. The scheme will deliver 267 student bedrooms for the University of London and their member institution of King's College London, with 35% of the rooms being offered as affordable student rooms. In addition, there will be a £2 million off-site affordable housing contribution. Given the contained nature of the site, your officers concluded that the inclusion of affordable housing on-site would harm both viability and result in a poor quality of accommodation for both residential and student homes, given the need for separate cores. There will also be significant public realm improvements around the site, including the creation of the pocket park to the rear of the site that both incorporates the existing trees on the site and the link between the green spaces of the Ruby Triangle and the Livesey Park. 
As a car-free development, the scheme will also ease pressure on the Old Kent Road in terms of associated traffic, litter and antisocial behaviour through the closure of the KFC restaurant and kickstart regeneration on this part of the Old Kent Road as construction would commence later this year, unlike many of the other consented schemes in the area where building work has yet to commence. Despite the challenges of consulting on our scheme during the COVID-19 pandemic, we sought to engage with key stakeholders and the local community, both through the setting up of a website, arranging community webinars via Zoom, and arranging one-to-one -one virtual meetings with key stakeholders, including Christchurch, Treasure House, the Ledbury TRA, the Elkham Road War Councillors, and Councillor Johnson City. During the council's own statutory consultation, only two comments have been received during the consultation period, one of whom support the proposals and only one objected. The student housing will be governed by a student management plan to ensure that existing residents are not disturbed by students. The scheme will also release conventional housing currently occupied by students for local people, as well as creating employment opportunities both during construction and across the longer term operational life of the building. So, it, so in conclusion, uh, the scheme will deliver 35% affordable student bed spaces, a £2 million contribution towards off-site affordable housing, um, and a raft of public realm improvements, including the delivery of a pocket park. Your time is um, up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Christoph. Um, are, there, are there questions from committee members? Are there questions? Uh, council, uh, right, uh, Councillor, right, <laughs> they're, they're going off and on here. Right, as in the order that I've seen them, Councillor O'Brien, followed by Councillor Livingstone. Thanks, Chair. Um, just wondering, how, um, what's the criteria for allocating the affordable student accommodation? Um, I can relay that to my colleague, Ed Fisher, who is a university representative. Ed, have you got that? Hi there. Thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, the... Me, but Ed, can I ask you, please, just for the record here, can you just confirm your name and organisation, please? Yeah, of course, sorry, yes. So, uh, Ed Fisher, uh, and I'm working for Nick Lawrence at Tribe Student Housing. Very good. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so the allocation of affordable student is generally, it, it's not really um, means tested necessarily, it is generally on a first come first serve basis. Having said that, the university within their own policies may be able to have a selection criteria. For instance, I know for this site, they were interested in looking at the opportunity of bringing people who are Southwark based students but have to live at home into PBSA because by studies, it shows that they get better um, education attainment by living in purpose-built student housing rather than at home. Um, so there will be some criteria applied to it, but at a general level, it's it's a bit kind of first come, first served. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that response. In that case, now I'll move on to Councillor Livingstone, followed by Councillor Merville. Thank you, Chair. Yes, now I wanted to follow up on my second question earlier about the design elements of yes. the building and that scope to consider uh, the appearance of the building and how it looks on the old Kent Road. Right, uh, who will respond to that, uh, Nick? Yep, so I can refer back to um, my architect, um, Louise or Sally on that. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, Louise or Sally. Right, who, who's going to respond, please? <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Sally Lewis from Stitch Architects. Very good. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, we, we conceive of the building um, as, as a, a light uh, a light colored building in contrast to many of the other buildings that have been given consent recently. And we thought that it could be given, um, I think my colleague Louise called it the pearl of the old Kent Road, but potentially something that's much lighter and just provides a bit of relief. So the gray that you see in those, in those CGIs, we, we see it very much as being a pale gray brick so as, as white as, as light as possible. Um, and we're using two different tones, using different uh, mortar colors. So the gray itself in its, uh, will be a very beautiful light gray brick. Um, and then that will be offset with the, um, the, the turquoise glazed tiles, which um, as Colin said, it's very difficult to portray in the CGI um, and, and hopefully the panels will bring more confidence. But um, 
the, the, we'll be using special, special profiled bricks as well, so that not only will they be glazed, but they'll also have some kind of shape that will catch the light. So it's very much about light and, and quite subtle tones, but um, definitely not plain and not gray. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I had Councillor Murrell. Are you still want to ask a question? Oh, no, that was, that was, there's just one little thing that I've just looked at is actually laundry facilities on the site. I know you've got three kitchens. Normally they, uh, you have a separate laundry or when I was a student, I had a separate laundry facility, just a minor, <laughs> minor thing, but just thought of might as well ask the question. Well, it's not a material planning question, but I'll let this one go through the way. Um, it does, <laughs> does the applicant wish, wish to comment on that, that particular question? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that there will be. That there's, there's laundry facilities um, in the basement. There, there's plenty of room down there for that for the students um, as and when they need it. Very good. Can, can I just, if, if I may, and I will ask officers later on about this, uh, the question of uh, the affordable uh, student space. Um, um, how do you monitor it? How do you monitor that uh, the right students are, are, are accessing the, the, the affordable student space? And um, do you declare publicly, either on the website or, or some other means, uh, that you've actually fulfilled the uh, um, any permission you might gain, uh, you've, you've fulfilled the terms of that permission? How do you monitor it? How can we be sure that um, the affordable student space is actually being used in, 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 for, for intended purpose? Who would respond to that question? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, can you say that again? Because I, I think. Okay, my, my question is uh, the affordable student space, okay, how, how can we be assured that uh, uh, one. The, those students who are entitled to that space will, 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 will be given it. And two, do you declare that information on a public website somewhere so we know if, if, if a member wishes to make sure that the, the, uh, the affordable student space is actually being taken up fully and, it's, and fully accounted for? Um, well, we can monitor it, um, yeah, monitor it as, ourselves and we, we can also mani manage it ourselves as far as i'm aware we don't need to declare it on this ed you know more um, i was going to say just actually from a uh, monitoring perspective um, because it will be listed on the university of london's website and through their accommodation office it would be publicly available to anybody to just log in and you would see it listed there um, how it then gets allocated uh, would be I suppose a question for the accommodation office on any individual year as to how they're allocating. I know that they typically get about 10 applicants per student bed space, so they have to operate a waitlist system. Um, but in terms of actually checking that the price for that number of rooms was correct, anybody would be able to do that online. Right, and it's on your website, in other words. Right, that's a, that's a, it's a, it's just a due diligence question. Thank you for, for your response. Are, 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 are there further questions from members of the committee? If not, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I, I note that the time is uh, 1926. I said on the hour, we will take a five minute um, break. I, I think we take it now before, we, before going on to our, our next presenter. It's 926, so we'll reconvene at 9.31 for a five minute uh, 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 screen.